Hey y'all, this is Leslie. Um, I have a word for you that I want to share. Um, and I'm back in the book of Esther, okay? Um, as I said before, God keeps talking to me and sharing things with me from the book of Esther. And um, today is no different, right? So I'm going to be coming from Esther 2, verses 2 and 3. And I'm going to be reading from the King James Version. Um, I'm going to read it to you and then I'm going to go into the word, okay? It says... Then said the king's servants that ministered unto him, him being King Ahasuerus or King Xerxes, um, let there be fair young virgins sought for the king and let the king appoint officers in all the provinces of his kingdom that they may gather together all the fair young virgins unto Shushan, the palace, to the house of the women, unto the custody of Haggai, the king's chamberlain, keeper of the women, and let their things for purification be given them okay um what god was sharing with me was that many of us many of you are asking god for something right we know that um when we read esther we are in the mind state or reading it from the from the focal point of marriage okay and many of you are asking god for marriage for your covenant spouse for your kingdom spouse and things of that nature but you have to be eligible for what it is you're asking for and so this is called the eligibility of esther okay to be and i have notes okay so i'm gonna be reading from them but to be eligible for something um is defined as having the right to do or obtain something it's satisfying the appropriate conditions for a thing okay it also means to be desirable or suitable as a partner in marriage. Um, it means to be qualified to participate or be chosen. It means to be worthy of being chosen. Um, and in order to be eligible for something, you have to meet the set criteria or requirements for that position or that right. Okay, so in the book of Esther, we see that many women were eligible, right? Many were called from... India, as far as India to Kush, many were called from 127 different provinces, right? But few, less than few, because few is three, but one, right, was actually chosen, okay? So um, I read to you Esther 2, 2 through 3, um, and again, I'm just going to read 2 again. It says, then the king's attendants who served him said, let fair young maidens be sought for the king, right? Um, and when we, when we read this, we see that there are a couple of requirements. There's just a few requirements, right? Um, the women had to be fair, beautiful, young virgins, okay? Um, and nothing was said about, like, they, they had to have a specific job, a specific skill, a specific level of intelligence, status, height, weight, hair color, skin color, nationality, none of that, right? Um, the requirements were minimal, but even in the requirements being minimal, not everybody could meet them okay you have to be able to meet all the requirements that the king has in order to even be called into the pool of eligible women so i'm sure there were many more women in these various cities um that could have been called right but they didn't meet the requirements of eligibility right and even though there were few not everybody meets those requirements okay and so many want to be married and they want to be in their marriage season, but you're not yet in the pool of eligible bachelorettes or bachelors if you're a man, right? There's certain things that God has told you um, that you need to do or that you need to become in order to move into the place of eligibility, okay? And I'm going to go back to what I said about eligibility. It means to be, uh, to have the right to do or uh, obtain something. It means that you're able to satisfy the appropriate conditions. Um, it means to be desirable or suitable as a partner in marriage, qualified to participate or to be chosen, worthy, chosen, worthy of being chosen, okay? Um, and some of you are wondering like, why hasn't my time come? Why haven't I gotten married yet? Or, you know, I've seen this one who maybe was standing for me longer or, you know, um, just whatever the case may be, somebody uh, not standing for me, but standing for uh, their covenant spouse longer, or you know, this person just got out of a relationship, they got into another one, now they're married, whatever the case may be. 
um, you're looking and you're wondering like what's going on. But a lot of times you're doing the opposite of what God has told you you need to do in order to be eligible for what it is you're asking for, okay? Um, now for some of these women in the story of Esther, their eligibility actually required them to end up moving away from their families, right? They had to move to Susa. And for some of you, God has required like an actual physical relocation. Um, and for others, there's spiritual things that he's called you to do to be eligible, but it's almost like, it's, it's almost like a checklist. Okay. Um, like God has told you, like you need to grow in certain things or there's certain things that you need to release. Right. And it's like, once you check these things off or once you do the things that God has asked you to do, um, you'll meet the criteria and you can move on to the next and the next, right. In order to get closer to your promise. But you have to be obedient to what he has specifically told you to do, okay? Maybe he's told you that you need to focus on your health. Um, maybe he's told you that you need to focus on your spiritual well-being. Maybe it's an attitude adjustment. Um, maybe he has, a uh, uh, he has a specific task or assignment that he needs you to complete. Um, and it's part of your processing for the next level, right? Esther had to go through a process of beauty treatments she um, and preparations before she could even encounter the king, okay? So first she had to be uh, selected into the pool of eligible applicants, if you will, right? To be able to even get into the, the palace. And then once she got into the palace, there were still additional things that she needed to do. Yes, she had favor, but she still had to go through the beauty treatments um, that were provided. She, yes, she was able to, was it fast paced because of her favor, but she still had to become completely eligible because, before she could even, sorry y'all, I got cut off. But basically Esther had to become eligible before she could even go in into in front of uh be shown to the king presented to the king i'm sorry okay so um i believe that the lord is saying that there is a beautification uh a purification and a cleansing that he also wants you to go through right and it literally is focusing on you know like your self-care the way that you look um taking care of yourself in a certain way dressing a certain way etiquette um you know for where he's taking you and for how he wants you to be prepared to enter the presence of the king the covenant spouse the kingdom spouse that he has for you okay he literally wants you to be your best self physically right he wants you to be looking your best he wants you to be, you to be smelling your best and not just for your covenant or kingdom spouse but also for yourself because you attract a different caliber of person when you exude the godly or god-given confidence that he wants you to have in order to move into this that marriage season or into that actual marriage right um when you're at your best best self inside and out you attract the best to yourself right um who can testify like when you are not feeling your best, sometimes the people that you attract, it's like, I don't want to be bothered with you, but there's something in you that's attracting these type of people. These people are gravitating towards you and that's not what you want. So you have to become your best self in order to attract what you truly, really want. And not only that, um, your covenant spouse, your kingdom spouse is looking for a specific type of woman, a specific type of man, right? And you need to show up as that person in order for them to recognize you just like you want them to show up in the way that you are prepared to recognize them. Because just as God has told you, he or she is gonna have X, Y, and Z, he or she has been told that you are gonna have X, Y, and Z. And so if I don't see what it is God has said, you know, this is what he's gonna look like, this is how he's gonna sound, this is what's gonna be going on, you know, if you've sat and you've had these type of conversations with God, right? Then when he or she comes, you're gonna miss them because they're not, they've not gone through their preparation. They've not gone through the process of eligibility to be able to be in the pool of who you should be seeking and vice versa. Does that make sense? Okay, so um, if brother hasn't cut his hair <laughs> or trimmed his beard in months, but God says, oh, he's gonna, he's gonna look like this. His, his hair is gonna look like this and that. And he's not where he needs to be. And if he's not where he needs to be spiritually, because God said, oh, he's going to be on fire for me. You're going to, when you see him, he's going to be preaching, praying and prophesying, you know, or like, you know what I mean? His, his spiritual life is going to be on fire. But when you meet him, it's a flame because he hasn't been going through the proper preparation and cleansing and purification that God has said and gotten himself 
to the place where God wants him or vice versa for you, then you're going to miss out or you're, you're not, you're not going to be able to receive that person because they don't look like, sound like, act like, walk like, talk like what God said he had for you. Does that make sense? It do. Okay. So if you unkept, you know, then they're probably going to pass you back because you don't look like what God told me I was supposed to be waiting on or expecting you know entertaining if that if, if you will okay so as much as we like to say it's you know it's only what's on the inside that counts yes it does but it's also um a lot of external right let's be real when we meet a person um what we see is external i don't know nothing about you internally you could be crazy as a betsy bug but you know with my eyes i see what's appealing to me right and that's going to be the initial introduction or whatever god has told you but you want to be attracted to this person right god wants you to be attractive to your spouse if your spouse listen when your spouse ain't when you're not attracted to your spouse and your spouse ain't attracted to you when you physically ask me how i know when you when you are no longer physically attracted or when you see somebody and and and, and you're not physically attracted to them you you, you ain't thinking about them. You go the other way. And so God says, I want you to be your best self internally, but also externally, because there are specific qualities that this person is looking for. And, and, and I need you to be obedient to what I'm telling you to do, even if it's maybe not something that you want to do, but that person is looking for specific things. And if you are not what I told them you are, it's like you taking yourself out of that eligibility pool and then you somewhere mad. Okay, and so I want to go back to the fair young virgins because um, many of many translations say beautiful, and you know, beautiful is a part of fair, but fair means more than just beautiful. Okay, because I was telling you there there were just a few qualifications, right, or requirements uh, for eligibility to be able to get into the palace, right? You just had to be a fair young virgin. But then I looked into the word fair, and I believe it's spelled T O B E. I can't remember what it is in the Strong's Concordance, but it's T-O-B-E, but it's pronounced Tov. And um, it actually means, it refers to good, pleasant, agreeable, valuable, appropriate, be, to be becoming, to be happy, to be of good understanding, to be ethically right, morally upright, precious, prosperous, beautiful, joyful, glad, someone of a favorable disposition, um, even likened to a tree that bears good fruit, okay? Somebody who's honest, acting well, merciful, distinguished, great, and excelling in, 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 in themselves, excelling as a person. So fair, child, I, I thought, I was thinking, oh, it's just beautiful, somebody who looks good or whatever, but there was so much more, and, it's, and, it's, and it makes sense because Esther embodied these qualities, right? These characteristics, okay? And so it's not just that you look good. It's not just that you shaped up because they, they some of the translations refer to her shape, but it's not just her shape. It's not just her, um, her outward appearance, her outward beauty, but all of these things that she was a good person, a pleasant person, agreeable. She was valuable, okay? She was appropriate. She was becoming. She was happy. She was of good understanding, ethically right, morally right, precious, prosperous, beautiful joyful glad someone of a favorable disposition even likened to a tree bearing good fruit honest acting well merciful distinguished great and excelling there is so much more to this that's what we have to oh the bible studies be something else child because when you really like go and look at a word and allow uh, 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 yourself to spend time studying the words, you see so much more. And words in the Hebrew and in the Greek mean a lot more than they do in English, okay? Um, and so when you take, even if you go and look at like the Cambridge Dictionary or whatever, it doesn't give you all of this when it says fair or or when it says beautiful. And so there are there, there was a lot more that went into this eligibility than I even realized. So there is a lot of work that has to go on internally, but also externally. I feel like God, I don't, I believe that God is saying, yes, he wants you to be fair on the inside and the outside. He wants you to work on the entire package so that you can be placed into the pool of eligibility. Okay. Because there's a king, there is a queen, right? There's, there, 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 there is there is a covenant spouse okay there's a kingdom spouse that's looking for you and you have to embody all of these qualities on the inside and the out you have to be concerned with your outward appearance as much as your inward self um to be able to be the package this this is that this person wants you don't want nothing raggedy let's just be real you know you you you've seen somebody who was great on the outside but the inside was just you know or 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 the person was great inside but externally 
it was like what's what's going on i mean he's a great person but i you know uh she's she she you know inside she's she's a sweet person but i, I can't get it i can't she won't comb my hair you know so place yourself in the pool of eligibility okay many are called few are chosen you want to be chosen I, what I've heard, we choose and what you want to be chosen right then you have to do all that God is requiring of you. You have to meet all the requirements of the covenant spouse, the kingdom spouse that God has for you. So I know this word makes sense, okay? <laughs> I know this word makes sense. The eligibility of Esther. And many of you Esthers have to get yourself into the place, myself as well, of eligibility where the person that God has for you can easily, like Jerome's looking for through the Himalayas, can easily uh discern that it's you can see that's that's who god has told me i'm supposed to be looking for that's who god told me i'm supposed to be entertaining that's the one that's the covenant spouse that's the kingdom spouse i'm sorry i don't want to be doing a whole i, I don't want to be doing no dating i don't want to i don't want to i want the person that god has for me to find me and for me to find that person like you know for us to to know to see to understand i'm not trying to go through a whole bunch of joe schmoes and figure it and, and th there's certain criteria that God has told me to look for or, or, or to pre prepare for um, to receive that person and for myself to have for that person to receive me. So that's the word, the eligibility of Esther. I know it makes sense. Take it back to God. If this is that season for you, get yourself eligible, eligible, bachelor, eligible, eligible bachelorette um yeah you have to be prepared you have to take the necessary steps to fulfill the requirements for what it is god said that you are walking into you're not just walking up into the palace unprepared you're not just walking up into the palace talking about you looking for your king and you have not met the the, the necessary necessary requirements and eligibility to go in there not everybody has access into the king's space quarters his court right you have to look a certain way you have to sound a certain way you have to behave and have etiquette a certain way um even with all that esther went through she still had to be called into his presence right but she had to be prepared esther could have lost her life at one point right thankfully he extended the scepter the scepter to her but that could have never happened if she had not been in the pool of eligibility if she had not been um prepared and purified and, and and cleanse the way that she was need that she needed to to be able to even be in his presence okay so that's the word